In this video, we're going to create roles and permissions in our Laravel Jetstream Inertia JS web app. Um, at the end of the previous video, um, we had just installed our Laravel Jetstream app, and now we're going to use the Spatty Spatty permissions roles and permissions package to implement roles and permissions. So let's quickly just go to that website. There we go. And we're going to see what we need to do. It's really simple. So we're going to go to installation in Laravel and we're just going to run this command. So go to the root of your project and run that. Perfect, that's installed. We don't need to do this. Um, we will do this. So publish the migration. So we're going to run that as well. We will run that. And then we will run the migration. Okay, so now we need to quickly go to our user model and add some thing. <laughs> this, we need to go to our user model and add the has roles trait. So come back to our project here and we need to go to app models user. I'm just going to shrink that down a bit. It's taking up a lot of room. I say that. There we go. Okay, so we can add that. And then we're gonna do use has roles. There we go. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna just create a seeder that will create some roles and permissions for us. So this is gonna show us here on the Spatty website, Spatty, Spatty. I don't know how you pronounce that, um, how you go about doing that. But we're just going to quickly go back to Laravel and we're going to see how we do seeding. Seeding, database seeding. So what we want to do is we want to generate a seeder. So writing seeders, make seeder. Okay, so we run php artisan make colon seeder and then we name our seeder. So we're going to call it roles seeder. Run that. And then if we go over here, you're going to see in our database seeders, we've got this roles seeder here. So let's open that up. And then this is where we're going to write our logic for our seeder. So for our roles and permissions. So we're going to look here. So this is how you create a permission. So we're going to put these to up here in our seeder. So now we have access to role and permission. And we're going to create a couple of roles. We're just going to create the default role and the admin role. So let's just do that here. So we're going to go do two. We're going to put default. We're going to call the name of it default. You can call these whatever you want. It's just how you're going to reference them and admin and admin. So now when this runs, this seeder, which we will call a command down here to run it, it's going to create these two roles, but we need to create permissions as well and assign them to the roles. So permission, so we can just copy that. We're only going to make we're going to make two permissions. So we're going to say uh, manage users. And we're going to put manage users here. And another one which is going to be create, uh, create tool, we're going to call it, because we're making our lead generation tool. And 
only certain users are. Well, only admin is going to be able to do that. Create tool. Permission. So create tool. Again, you can create whatever permissions you want. This is just because this is relevant to the app that we're making. So we're going to now assign these permissions, both of them, to the admin role. Default is going to have no permissions um, that we don't need it to uh, at this moment in time. You can always add to them later, but we don't need to. So give permission to, but what we can do is because we've got a couple of permissions, we're going to sync the multiple, yeah, multiple permissions can be synced to a role. So we're going to just copy that, paste it here. Now that needs to be an array. So if we go create an array, those two. Okay. So now, oh, so now what's happening here is, hang on, I need to put that role, admin. So let's just quickly look through what's actually happening here. So when we run this seeder, we create the default role, which is here. We create the admin role. We create the manage users permission. We create the create tool permission. We then add these two permissions that we've created here to a permissions array. And then we then add, well, we sync the permissions to the admin role, which we've created up here. So permissions is this array here. Admin is this role that we've created up here. Hope that makes sense. So save that. And now we need to run this cedar. So let's have a look how we do that. Let's come down here. So we're back on the Laravel website, just seeing how we do it. So you can either do this command, which will run all cedars that are in this database cedar file, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to run individual cedars. So we're going to go copy that, paste it in the terminal. And the name of that cedar is roles cedar. We're just going to run that. Okay. And that's successfully run. So now if we go over to our database, we'll see we have these tables here. So we've got permissions, we've got roles and roles has permissions. So let's have a quick look at what's in roles should have default and admin. Yes, default admin. And we've got these IDs here. So the first one we created was default and the second one was admin. So one and two. Uh, let's have a quick look back and we've got permissions, manage users and create tool. Okay. So if we then have a look at role has permissions, we can see. So we had the role ID. So can you remember admin role had the ID too. And these are the IDs of the permissions. So we can see that the admin role does have those permissions. So that's great. That's working as expected. Now we want to create another seeder and we want to create our admin um, user. So we're going to just run another command to make seeder. And I'm just going to call this user seeder. And that's going to appear down here. So let's go into that one. And now we want to use app models user. Now that's just talking about this file here, this model. Okay, so we want to go, we want to say new user, or should I say admin user? Let's call it admin user, which is a new user equals new user and then we want to say well let's have a look at the structure of the table so if we go here we see users we see all these fields we've got no users currently um, maybe a better idea would be to look at have a just quick look at the user 
model. So we need a name, email, and password. So that's what we're going to create in our user seeder. So admin user name, and it's going to be me. So I'm going to call it John. Let's just copy this email info at Kogan password. Now we need to do something a bit special here. We need to hash the password. So we need to use this hash function. If we have a look here in the Fortify actions, Fortify create new user, we can actually see the logic that's used for that. See, this is how a user is made by default. And we're gonna edit this file in a second as well for our default users. So we can apply the default um, user role to our newly created users. So let's just copy that. Uh, what was it? Okay. So this one is currently, because it's in our create new user file, it's taking the input that is submitted by the new user and hashing it. Um, so we need to just change this to whatever we want. Now, it's important to know because we're making an admin user, once we've created this and seeded it, you want to log in and change the password because, I mean, I don't know how someone would be able to see this, but if you're uploading it to GitHub, this is going to be available. So just change it as soon as you can. Uh, so let's just call this secure password. Okay. And now we need to go admin underscore user save. And now if we run this, so user cedar forgotten the most important bit. We need to apply the role, not the most important bit. Admin user, oops. So this creates the user and now here we need to assign role. Uh, and I believe it's assign role, but let's have a quick look at the spatey docs. Da, 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 da. Assign. You want to assign a role to user. So let's have a quick look. Oh, okay. Using permissions via roles is probably going to be here. Yeah, assigning roles. Okay, what's that anyway? Uh, so assign role and then we're going to say admin. Okay, so assign role, admin. Save that. And now if we run that, see I put that in just now down there. So we're running the user seeder. Now if we go, that's run. And now if we go back to our database and we'll go to our users table, we see we've got one entry here and it should be John, that email, and the hash password. So if we now go back to our app and click on login, put in those details, secure password is the password. Login, we're logged in. So that's good. So that's our admin user sorted. One more thing we're going to do, and then this video will be finished. We're going to Go to our create new user file, which is in actions, fortify, create new user. And we're going to just assign the default role to all new users that get created. So not including the admin one. So we're just going to make this a variable that we can then use. So we're going to call that new user instead of returning it straight away. And then we're going to go new user, assign role. And we're going to assign it the default role that we created in our cedar.
and then we're gonna return new user because it was being returned there by, by uh, default. New user. Save that. And now let's log out and create a new user. Register. And we're gonna call this one test user. Test at test.com password. Register. So that's now created. And now if we go to our user table again, we'll see test here. So that's been created successfully, successfully even. And now we want to go to our where are we? Model has role. Got there in the end. And you'll see it's saying that users. So we've got role ID two, which is admin. Model ID one, which is the John user, the admin user we created. And then we've got role ID one, which is default. It's assigned to model ID number two, which is the second user we just created. So what you'll find is if once you're creating more and more users, you'll see that they have the role ID of one, which is default. And then they have you'll have the, the user's ID here. So that is how you create roles and permissions in Laravel JetStream with Inertia.js. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at some of the JetStream features. We're going to enable two-factor authentication, enable profile pictures, and enable API tokens. And we might enable some more stuff if we need to. I can't remember. Okay, so I'll see you in the next one.